All right, we're starting a new chapter here, chapter 14 on principles of disease and epidemiology. This chapter has a lot of terminology um, to remember, but it covers a lot of the stuff we've been kind of living through with this pandemic. And so different terms and things may come up that will sound familiar, familiar to you as we go through. So in this first um, part of the notes here, our objectives are to compare and contrast normal and transient microbiota. We've talked about that right away at the beginning of the, um, like the first chapter. We're gonna compare and contrast the three types of symbiosis. And then we're gonna come back to Koch's postulates on the etiology of a disease. In other words, what causes a disease. So here are some different terms that you need to, to know. Pathology is the study of disease. So um, if, if you had it, um, a swab of your throat taken or anything like that, even a COVID test, they will send that test to the pathology lab at a clinic or at a hospital to check to see what you might have. Okay, so pathology lab, labs are a part of any clinic or hospital usually, but pathology, study of disease. Etiology is the study of the cause of a disease, okay? Um, pathogenesis is the development of disease. Infection means that you, your body is colonized by pathogens, any uh, disease-causing organism. And then actual disease is the abnormal state that your body gets put in where it's not functioning pro properly, okay, um, because of your infection. Now, um, we, talk, we can talk about transient microbiota and normal microbiota on your body. Transient microbiota is uh, those that are there um, only for maybe a few days, weeks, or even months. So they're just kind of there temporarily, hanging out, and then they may not stay in your body. Your normal microbiota are those that are permanently part of you. Remember how I said your friends, you have more, more microbes in and on you than you do of your own cells. Um, a lot of those normally colonize your intestinal tract to help you break down your food and provide you with some um, different vitamins and things. Um, uh, with females, you normally have some normal uh, microbiota in your uh, uh, vagina and vaginal area to kind of kind of control um, any kind of, uh, you know, kind of prevention of uterine tract infections and yeast infections and things like that. So you have those normal microbiota that kind of try to keep conditions um, um, kind of at a homeostasis in your body. There are some things that can influence, though, your distribution. Uh, nutrients, how well you're eating, various physical and chemical factors. Um, uh, defenses of the host, how strong your immune system is, um, mechanical factors, and then other things like your age, your diet, uh, hospitalization. Have you been on antibiotics that, uh, like a strong dose that's killing off a lot of your normal microbiota? Well, and that can cause some issues. Um, personal hygiene, obviously, how well um, uh, you're able to clean yourself and all that. Geography. Uh, you know, there's some regions of the world that are more underdeveloped that may underdeveloped that maybe don't have the best water supply or uh, access to good hygiene um, uh, to keep yourself clean. Um, symbiosis is the relationship between two organisms in which one is at least one is dependent on the other. So usually it's when something lives in or on something else. Now, commensalism, I like to use these little symbols here. The plus means it's beneficial for one. The kind of diagonal slash here means, eh, it, it doesn't har harm or help. You know, the other is unaffected. Okay, so it's not necessarily benefiting you, doesn't necessarily harm you. Okay, many of our normal microbiota are commensals. So they, they benefit because they get a place to live, you know, kind of free room and board. <laughs> They get food from you, they get a place to live and a safe environment and all that kind of stuff. But it, they don't really harm us, you know. Uh, mutualism 
that's like two thumbs up here. That's two pluses here. That means both organisms benefit. It's good for both. So when we talk about E. coli in our large intestine, they're benefiting because they get food and a place to live. But they produce some vitamin K and vitamin B vitamins for us. And so that's beneficial to us. So in this case, E. coli is acting as um, uh, a mutualistic uh, relationship within us. Um, probiotics, that's ingesting live cultures to promote beneficial effect. And then prebiotics, those are chemicals that promote the growth of beneficial bacteria. So those are some things that sometimes people take, a lot of times they'll advertise probiotics for, for good gut health, for good intestinal health. Well, what they're saying is, hey, we wanna get more of those good beneficial microbes into your gut, into your digestive system so that you're able to better uh, break down your food, get some of the vitamins from those and so on. Um, parasitism, here's where it's good for the parasite they benefit, but you don't. The host doesn't. That's a negative sign. So one organism benefits, other is harmed, and that other that is harmed is called the host. Okay? And there'll, there'll be some videos you can go on and watch as well. So here are some of the different areas where you might find normal uh, microbiota. A lot of times it's, it's where you've got those mucous membranes, okay? Um, so in your eyes, your mouth, on your skin, obviously, in your intestinal tract, so large and small intestines, um, you're gonna have some of those beneficial bacteria there. And then in the urinary and reproductive systems, both the lower urethra for both males and females, and then the vagina and females. Um, some microbes um, are opportunistic pathogens. And so in a normal habitat, of healthy person they do not cause disease but in a different environment they may so like you have you might have um, staph aureus on your skin let's say well you've heard of MRSA methicillin resistant staph aureus that can cause issues well it's fine if it's just hanging out on your skin and you have you know no problem but if all of a sudden you get a cut and now that enters into your bloodstream now it can now that it's in a new environment, now it might wreak some havoc, can cause some real major issues, okay? Also, if it can get into your mucous membranes, um, if it's not normally found there. So sometimes those um, pathogens will take the opportunity if it presents itself and invade your body. Microbial antagonism, that's where there's competition between microbes. So they're both trying to compete for that same like place to live, that same ecological niche, um, so that spot in, on your body. Uh, so they want to live in that space, they wanna get the food from that space and all the resources from that space. And so usually one microbe will kind of out-compete the other one. Um, so a lot of times your normal microbiota, why we want a good flourishing microbiome is they prevent the overgrowth of harmful microbes, okay? They occupy those niches that the pathogens might op occupy. Um, like your normal microbiota compete with a bacterium called Clostridium difficile, or C. diff is what they call it a lot of times in the hospitals. Well, sometimes if you're on a major bout of antibiotics because of some other infection, C. diff will take advantage of that because now you've killed off some of your normal microbiota and now this will take over. And so sometimes they have issues with that with people when they're in the hospital, suddenly they'll develop this C. diff infection because you've killed off your normal, there was microbiota that was out competing the C. diff, but now the C. diff can take over. Um, uh, con producing acids uh, helps control the pH. Um, and so a lot of times that, like for females, they need the, the vagina to be a, at a certain pH level and that prevents um, infections like inflammation of the, of the vagina, um, yeah, yeast infections and things like that. And then producing bacteria sins, um, these are different um, chemicals that bacteria can produce that protect against other bacteria. Okay, so E. coli produces some um, bacteria sins that can actually kill off salmonella and shigella, which are a little bit more pathogenic. And so 
um, it's very, very important that we have our normal microbiota. We don't want to get rid of those. And that's why some people, like I said, will take those probiotics along with sometimes prebiotics to really enhance the environment for those probiotics to work. And then there's a nice diagram on page 405 in your textbook, so you might want to take a look at that as well. But um, remember, Koch's postulates uh, is a way of showing how a particular, okay, so it shows how a certain microbe causes a certain disease. Okay? So the same pathogen must be present in every case of the disease. You first of all have to isolate it from the diseased hosts and grow it in pure culture. Then you must take that pathogen from the pure culture and it has to be able to cause disease when you inoculate it into a healthy uh, host animal. Okay. Then you isolate it again from this inoculated animal and it must look the same. It has to look the same as the microbe that was in the original infected animal, okay? And it's really these postulates that led to the germ theory of disease. How a particular microbe causes a certain disease. And so um, they are used to uh, prove the cause of infectious diseases. We can use those. Um, we can't always use Koch's postulates, though. It's, it, it's a very effective step-by-step -step method that we've been using for years to show, oh, this is what's actually causing this disease over here. But there are some exceptions here. Uh, some bacteria have unique culture requirements. Um, they might not grow on your artificial media in the lab. And so the microbe that causes syphilis and leprosy, those two cannot grow in the lab setting. Some pathogens cause severe disease conditions like tuberculosis and uh, uh, Streptococcus pyogenes. Um, so you have to be careful. It's not like you just want to inject that into a healthy host, do you? That can cause some very uh, major and um, serious conditions. Uh, the signs and symptoms might um, be indicative of different types of pathogens, so it's hard to narrow it down because that same those same signs and symptoms could show up from other types of infections as well. Um, so nephritis, inflammation of the kidney, that can kind of be associated with a number of different types of pathogens. And then some pathogens cause disease in, only in humans, so we can't even experiment with a host animal. So like HIV, for example, you're not going to inject that into a human just to see if it's the cause of a disease, because that would be bad. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, we still use Koch's postulates today. It's a very effective way of showing what microbe causes a particular disease, but just know that there are some rare instances where we can't always use that.